Our Mass is being offered for Doris Meyer. Christ, having risen from the dead, dies now no more. Death will no longer have dominion over him. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, to prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You were seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that we, who have been renewed by Paschal remedies, transcending the likeness of our earthly parentage, may be transformed in the image of our Heavenly Maker. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. After their release, Peter and John went back to their own people and reported what the chief priests and elders had told them. And when they heard it, they raised their voices to God with one accord and said, Sovereign Lord, maker of heaven and earth and the sea and all that is in them, you said by the Holy Spirit through the mouth of our father David, your servant, why did the Gentiles rage? and the peoples entertained folly. The kings of the earth took their stand, and the princes gathered together against the Lord and against his anointed. Indeed, they gathered in this city against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed, Herod and Pontius Pilate, together with the Gentiles and the peoples of Israel, to do what your hand and your will had long ago planned to take place. And now, Lord, take note of their threats, and enable your servants to speak your word with all boldness as you stretch forth your hand to heal and signs and wonders are done through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. As they prayed, the place where they were, sh were gathered shook and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and continued to speak the word of God with boldness. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blessed are all who take refuge in the Lord. Blessed are all who take refuge in the Lord. Why do the nations rage, and the peoples utter folly? The kings of the earth rise up, and the princes conspire together against the Lord and against his anointed. Let us break their fetters and cast their bonds from us. Blessed are all who take refuge in the Lord. He who is throned in heaven laughs. The Lord derides them. Then in anger he speaks to them. He terrifies them in his wrath. I myself have set up my king on Zion, my holy mountain. I will proclaim the decree of the Lord. Blessed are all who take refuge in the Lord. The Lord said to me, You are my son. This day I have begotten you. Ask of me, and I will give you the nations for an inheritance, and the ends of the earth for your possession. You shall rule them with an iron rod. You shall shatter them like an earthen dish. Blessed are all who take refuge in the Lord. Seek what is above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with you. 
with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. There is a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. He came to Jesus at night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you are doing unless God is with him. Jesus answered and said to him, Amen, amen, I say to you, unless one is born from above, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man once grown old be born again? Surely he cannot re-enter his mother's womb and be born again, can he? Jesus answered, Amen, amen, I say to you, unless one is born of water and spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. What is born of flesh is flesh, and what is born of spirit is spirit. Do not be amazed that I told you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it wills, and you can hear the sound it makes, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I'm sure a number of us here, I don't know how many, so I'm not going to presume how many, but I'm sure some, like myself, have encountered uh, a group of what are called born-again Christians. That's what they call themselves. They have a couple other names, but that's not the point I'm going to make here. Uh, they, who have, um, they are evangelical or non-denominational Christians that uh, say that they had a conversion experience when they made a f uh, profession of faith in Christ Jesus, uh, made, uh, put their faith in the Bible, and they experienced this feeling of being uh, forgiven, being at peace, being at joy. And they call it their born-again experience. Uh, and when they go to describe where this comes from in the Bible, they'll often cite this passage that we just heard from the Gospel of John, where Jesus says, Whoever, you must be born again from above uh, in order to see the kingdom of heaven. The interesting thing is, for all their uh, pro proclamations that they believe in the Bible and they know the Bible like the back of their hand, they neglect that second sentence of Jesus, where he says, Unless one is born of water and spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. When they make the, this profession of faith, there's no water involved. They don't say that they've been baptized. They don't say anything about water. They just, they'll often say a prayer along the lines of, Jesus, I'm a sinner, please forgive me. Some variation of that. But there's no water involved. So if Jesus is saying one is born of water and spirit, and here they're saying it's just a profession of faith, there's a bit of a disconnect there. Now we know that Jesus is talking about baptism. At least I hope we know that this is talking about baptism. That baptism for us is a, the born-again experience. In the sense that, one, when we enter the waters of baptism, whether the water is poured over our head or whether we're actually submerged into the water, that we're dying with Christ. By going into the water, we go into the tomb with Christ. Our old life passes away. And then when we rise from the waters of baptism, we rise with Christ into the new life of the resurrection. So one life comes to a definitive end, and a new life is starting. And thus we're born out of the waters into a new life. But even more than that, Jesus goes on to tell us, what is born of flesh is flesh, and what is born of spirit is spirit. So it's not just that we're born again in a spiritual sense, that one life of ours is ending and a new life is starting, but we're literally being recreated. We are being transformed into sons and daughters of God. We're not always sons and daughters of God. We're not just naturally born as sons and daughters of God. We have to be adopted into that. When we're born naturally, our first birth is birth as creatures of God. And then through baptism, through that grace of adoption, we are adopted into that sonship. And through that, we are, uh, through that adoption, we are made anew into uh, sons and daughters of God and heirs to that kingdom. 
We are uh, born a second time into that divine life of the Spirit and made like Christ as human and divine through the reception of the Holy Spirit. That's what the born again here is referring to. The fact that we die and rise into the new life of Christ and that we are born again and recreated as sons and daughters of God. So anytime someone asks you, have you been born again or have you been saved? You can tell them, yes, I have been born again in the waters of baptism and the, Spirit, the Holy Spirit of, uh, through confirmation. And I am being saved in this moment by working out my salvation in the words of Paul it, through fear and trembling. So uh, that can be and should be your response to these uh, born-again Christians. And as we continue now our celebration of the Mass, let us renew that baptismal uh, grace, that transformation by receiving Christ into ourselves, um, whether uh, sacramentally or in this case spiritually, by receiving that grace into ourselves and being renewed in the spirit of our adoption and made more and more fully into that image and likeness of Christ. Praise be Jesus Christ, now and forever. As we offer our prayers to our Heavenly Father, let us be mindful of the needs of the Church and the world. For Pope Francis, may the Holy Spirit continue to guide him as he shepherds his flock, the Church, and for all of our bishops, that they might work with him to guide us ever closer to Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For world leaders, may God grant them the courage and wisdom in protecting the dignity and sanctity of human life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who do not yet believe in God, may the Lord stir in their hearts a desire to know Him. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our faith community, may the Holy Spirit increase in us the fruits of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are wrestling with despair and discouragement over the current situation, and for our deliverance from this plague of the coronavirus, that the Lord might be with us and deliver us and strengthen us in patience and hope, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the faithful departed, particularly those who have no one else to pray for them, May the Lord welcome them into the heavenly kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And now let us take a moment to present our own needs and petitions in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God our Father, maker of heaven and earth, we ask you to hear the prayers of your family gathered here today. We ask all this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands that will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all of his holy church. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church, and as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit and perpetual happiness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But on, in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world, by dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers of the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holy, holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which has been put. Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Ronald our Bishop and all the clergy. 
Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you for your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Jesus stood in the midst of his disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. Alleluia. Please join me in our prayer of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just one last brief reminder about the uh, for the show and tell mass discussion thing this evening. Um, that'll be live streamed here on our parish Facebook page in the same way that we're doing the mass uh, right now at seven o'clock this evening. So, and following the discussion, you'll be able to submit uh, questions via the comment thread which will be read out and I'll be able to answer them in that manner. So please feel free to join us for that tonight at 7 o'clock here on the Parish Parish Facebook page. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying God with your lives. Thanks be to God. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls.